All right, let's look at some examples. Um, so we want to put the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus to use here. Right? So in this first example, the first thing we do is we identify what is the function being integrated. f of x is x cubed. Right? So next step is we find an antiderivative, big F. So power rule says that should be x to the 4 over 4. Again, in general, if we want a most general antiderivative, we put a constant of integration in there. We put our plus c, but we don't need it here because um, we're using the second part of the fundamental theorem, which is any antiderivative will do. So we set the constant equal to 0. It's the simplest choice, right? All right. So then, second part of the fundamental theorem, calculus, says that this integral should be f, big F at 3, subtract big F at minus 2. So it's going to be 3 to the 4th over 4, subtract minus 2 to the 4th over 4. So we get 81 minus 16 over 4. Um, which is 65 over 4. Okay, and then we're done, right? So that's the that's the power of using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, the alternative would be to set up a partition, right, with x1 equal to minus 2 or delta x. In fact, we did this one, I think, right? Um, we, yeah, I think we did this one, right? It was a mess, right? This was one of our last Riemann sum examples that we did. And, you know, we had uh, our xi plus 1 looked like minus 2 plus i times, what, uh, 5 over n. We had to cube that whole thing out. We had to use all those summation formulas. Here, we just find an antiderivative. We plug in the endpoints. We're done. So much nicer. So much simpler, right? Um, now, one other thing I'll mention before we move on. common notation that we use for these. Um, rather than having to kind of do this work at the beginning where we say, okay, this is my function, here's my antiderivative, and then we say, okay, so it's the antiderivative here minus the antiderivative there. Um, there's a sort of vertical bar symbol that we use uh, to denote the fact that we're going to plug in the endpoints of the integral, the limits of our, of our integration into this antiderivative. And so what we do is instead of writing all this, we do this. We say, it's the integral from minus 2 to 3, x cubed dx. And either kind of, you know, on the side or maybe in your heads for something simple enough like this, you work out that antiderivative, x to the 4 over 4, and you put in this vertical bar to indicate that you're going to plug in the endpoints. Okay? So you read this as x to the 4 over 4 evaluated at minus, or at 3 and minus 2, or evaluated from minus 2 to 3. Different, you, doesn't matter how you read it, the point is that the next step is you, you plug those in as we did before, right? Um, so that gives you a notation that's a little bit more compact for evaluating these integrals. Um, so with that in mind, we're going to go on, we're going to do the other three here, but we'll do that in the next video. We'll pause here for a second.